fan of Kubernetes and Cloud Native. It was always fascinating to hear your side of story and how you actually presented Google's uh, you know, big picture and vision to the analysts. So, uh, you know, what was it like building the world's first managed Kubernetes service? And I, I, I know uh, Google was obviously the first one to bring managed Kubernetes to the hyperscaler environment. Uh, so did you did you collaborate with the original founders, the trio of you know Joe Beda, Craig McLeckie, and Brandon Burns? How how was that experience? Yes, um, uh, I think uh, you know the experience of bringing GKE to market and building it into the first and I believe the most um, effective uh, you know managed Kubernetes service. Um, I think it was, uh, you know, kind of that zero to one founding experience. Um, and then after that building, you know, the hybrid offering as well, very much, you know, kind of the founding experience there. Um, my belief, um, you know, I think Kubernetes, it, it has two prongs. It has the open source, you know, the community piece, um, the piece where we do co-development with um, many other players that are serving different parts of the ecosystem. I think that is very important. And actually, that's where I started. When I started on the Kubernetes team, I started with the open source. Um, and given my storage background, I started with, with the storage interface. Um, but, you know, I was always convinced that in order to make an open source project sustainable, it is extremely important that we have a commercial uh, offering and that that commercial offering should be an area of focus for our team um, and that we should be working very closely with our customers. There were a few reasons for this. And I, I would say that, you know, one of my contributions to certainly Google and uh, Kubernetes is bringing that commercial focus um, along with and marrying it alongside with our open source leadership. This is kind of a difficult thing to do in some sense, uh, but it's 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 really important, and I can talk more about why I think it's important. You know, for an open source project, especially for the core maintainers, for the ones that are, um, you know, gen have generated that project, it's extremely important that they also have close connection to that project in production with customers. You learn a different set of things when you're working with customers who are running mission critical applications on your software. And, there, and that informs your roadmap and how you develop that roadmap. I think it's extremely important. You know, my experience working with, um, with uh, CIOs inside enterprises um, during my McKinsey, uh, McKinsey days and also NetApp days, it uh, really taught me the importance of being close to customers. It's also something that I enjoy very, very much. And so it's one thing to be working with the, um, you know, leading edge of developers in the open source. It's also very important and it teaches you something else, but it's another thing and a very important thing to work with paying customers who are giving you money and their, their own livelihood is dependent on your software. So we learned a lot and they would file bugs against, uh, against GKE. And we would learn um, from those bugs. We would, of course, improve GKE, but we would also upstream the capabilities into Kubernetes. So it was a really virtuous flywheel, both for the open source as well as for, the, as for, as well as for us commercially. And um, we built that into a highly commercially viable project. Some of the things that we did, um, we improved the usability. We created a really nice dashboard. We made it possible to start clusters in less than five minutes. Um, and we continued to work on that goal, reducing it to three minutes and two minutes. Um, we, you know, kind of uh, learned from our customers what was important in terms of moving from digital natives to enterprises, uh, really improving uh, the storage interface, uh, really improving and bringing in the RBAC capabilities, um, you know, and improving the security. A lot of the questions that our enterprise customers had on GKE in the initial days were around container security and what are the capabilities that you can offer us there. So it really shaped our roadmap. And ultimately, you know, we built uh, GKE into an SLA backed service. Uh, we added scalability to it. So it's, it's much more scalable than, than, you know, other managed services. And indeed, you're right, it was the first managed service. Um, and I think it was for some time the only managed service, at least a cloud managed service. The other advantage we had was that we did operate in the cloud. And so our customers, 
you know, were always live and they were always, you know, their usage was always giving us feedback and we could actually monitor what was happening to an extent. We can't, you know, look inside a customer's environment, but um, at a high level, we could see what kind of operating system is being used. Where are the bugs? You know, is it the node? Is it the networking? Where are the problems? What are the types of problems that people are having? Uh, so we learned a lot from that. And I think it made both our um, product better as well as the open source project better. And then with regard Absolutely. to where, yeah, yes, go. And with, you asked a question about, um, you know, the origins of Kubernetes. The origins of Kubernetes are very much from Borg inside Google. And so the, I would say that I worked very, very closely with the originating team because I, I think of the originating team as the original Borg team that then split off to work on Kubernetes. And Brian Grant and Tim Hawkin, uh, folks like Don Chen um, and uh, David Oppenheimer uh, 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 and, and Daniel Smith, these are folks that originally worked on various different aspects of Borg. So um, uh, Don Chen, for example, she was responsible for the node, um, for the operating system interface, for the Docker interface, uh, for the container runtime. This was very, very important in the beginnings when we were trying to set standards. Um, and then, uh, you know, David Oppenheimer, he was responsible for the scheduler um, and for all of the innovations. You know, when I started, it was a very basic scheduler. And then we worked through so many new capabilities, like um, they have very interesting names, you know, forgiveness and affinity <laughs> and, um, you know, adding custom schedulers. And um, we also had the scaling team in Warsaw. These were all with Wojtek. These are folks that have been, and with uh, Daniel Smith, the API server. Think about, you know, we had third party resource and custom resource uh, definitions, and that has become a whole thing of its of its own. So um, I believe that I worked with, uh, with the founding team of Kubernetes over many years to actually bring out those pieces of Kubernetes that um, you know were reimagined from Borg in the context of our enterprise customers, and that was very much a co-development and really kind of an invention, I think, of uh, of what Kubernetes is today, and of course what GKE is today. I did also Absolutely. overlap a little bit with uh, with uh, with um, Craig McLucky for sure, and also with Brendan Burns, but they were not working on Kubernetes at the time when we overlapped. That they were working on other areas of Google Cloud.